I got some guests on here tonight. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of things. It's Yo, the big, Mano, big show. What's up, crack? Welcome to the big show. This shit ain't no. Nah, no, this ain't no. a little Guys show. Guys like me and you, let me explain something to you. Guys like me and you, they're never going to tell us the truth, bro. They're not, they never, they don't want us, guys, they, they, you know, they don't believe that we can change. They don't believe, they think we still bad. Guys, they scared, because they're scared. They don't want to big us up. And, and, and like, I've been kicking their asses, whoever's the competition. Yeah. Shout out Big Bang. Yeah. Big Bang from ATL. Shout out, uh, Sus one I just saw, is Biscuit, the world's biggest blogger. And so, they know, they don't want, I'm not, I've been putting my foot up their ass. For As like you should. Eight and a half months on the big big show yeah. every night. Yeah. And I'm As not taking should. no talk back. But you ain't gonna stop though. That's the thing. No. You ain't gonna stop. Never and what I and what happen. I always tell what I always tell you, you're my favorite. Yeah, I know you do. I, 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 I hit you at random you times. Me. I call. I hit you. I text you at random times, and I just give you flowers. I I've, say, been in, I've been in parties and you pull up in the back of my ear. I don't even know what's you. And you be like, yo, you my favorite, bro. Don't stop. Keep giving Ever. them hell. Ever. Listen, Ever. man, oh, man, it really fit. Well, it's Jay-Z's birthday. It is. What has Jay-Z done for you? You know, music as a man, you coming from Brooklyn. What type of inspiration has he done for you? Hove is the is the greatest example of inspiration for us, right? I'm from bed I'm from Nostrand. He from Marcy. I grew up knowing Tata and their family, all right, his sisters. Hove is the greatest example of what, coming from the street, coming from the projects, coming from that era, what it looked like when you put your mind to something, when you, when you, when you chase your dreams, when you work hard, it's endless. The possibilities is endless. You can do you can do almost anything. Like even me sitting here today, right now, having been in the street and been to prison, and being able to to change some of those, to navigate through the streets and through the industry to get here. You know, for me, it's beyond the music. I was about to say it before I clicked on to you. It's about the humanitarian. It's mm -hmm. about People kicking us when we down. It's about mm -hmm. people telling us because we grow up in the projects that we ain't shit and we dumb. That's right. So now, if you look at kindergarten classes and, and little black and Spanish kids running around there, they probably looking in the fucking gate like these are dummies. Mm -hmm. These are dummies. And so you got a guy like Jay-Z who grew up, I'm not sure, welfare, but definitely in the projects. And is just as smart, if not 10 times smarter mm -hmm. than a guy who went to Harvard or went to Yale or whatever they bullshit schools they talking about. That's right. And the man went from hustling to becoming a billionaire and showing kids for generations and generations to come. So the thing is, it took me Lord Finesse to rap so I could be like, yo, I could become a rapper. Like, right. Jay-Z is the example where you can look at him and say, yo, I'm smart. I'm not going to give up. And I'm going to put my people on and bring them with me. Right. Right. You know, he he's the example of how you start, you don't have to finish that way. Mm. Just because you start a particular way. See, the whole narrative of, of, of being a street nigga is, you know, we had to do whatever we had to do because we, that's that's what we had. We we adapted we adapted to our environments. We became savages because that was our response, right? But and we sold drugs and we did whatever we had to do. But they don't tell us that we we don't have to we don't have to stay that way. We don't got to die, street niggas. Mm -mm. So and I, that's the challenge. Yeah, and that's, that's the challenge. Yeah, yeah. especially for the young boys because. Uh, shout out to my girl, Erica Ford. Erica, Erica Ford. Ford in the streets. Yeah. I love my life. She's always out there with, 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 with the at-risk youth. She put me on the phone with them the other day, the Bloods, the Crips. Mm -hmm. um, that's right. And she's always trying to give back. Um, But that's the challenge. 
people get in the game to change their life and then they wind up being caught up with certain elements that come with the shit and they're trying to prove they tough they trying to this and then they fall for all that bullshit and right. and that's what we're trying to say you don't have to start that way and, and we don't gotta end that way we don't gotta, don't gotta see Mano in cups no, I don't no, gotta no. see Fat Joe in cups that's counterproductive like music for us because we come from a certain era right so coming from the street music we looked at music as an opportunity to get away from what we was doing out here, right? It was a door into something different. We was trying to escape some, the drilling that we had to do and everything else. So now I, I feel like the lines is blurred. You got, you got social media and you got a certain type of culture that basically blurs the line between being a street nigga and being an entertainer because it's like, the young niggas is getting on and they not really understanding that now is the time to take your business serious and treat it as a business. And what we what we starting to see is a lot of that, a lot of that back and forth becoming detrimental. You know what I mean? You know, I wanted to label this, but I can't on such a glorious day, Jay-Z's birthday. But I wanted to call this rappers are in danger. Mm. I wanted to actually, for the first time on this show, label the fucking show called Rappers Are In Danger. Now, we're seeing rappers getting murdered every day. We're seeing rappers going to jail with, for big shit. This ain't, this ain't little shit, may know, right? And um, how have you managed to stay out the way like to get caught up with these things, right. man. We're right. gonna talk real shit today. Of course, we're gonna talk real shit. You mm -hmm. know we're gonna keep it all the way on 100. You know it's so easy to, to always, you know, delve back into what you know because it's what you know for so long. And then you never really cut all your ties off. You understand? It is a thin line. But when you, you can live off hope, bro. When you got, when you got a dream and you got something to live for and you got something to focus on, right? That's how I did my time. That's how I spent three and a half years in the box in solitary like that, having hope and having dreams. When you're working towards something, you got a purpose. You, got, you set these goals for yourself, you got somewhere to go with that. The problem is that we, 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 we lose in focus in what is important and what's not. My nigga, like I said before, music was a way out. That's the door to something different. The opportunities is endless. We don't have to die street niggas. How? I don't want to die there. That's counterproductive. You know, I looked around, one of the reasons, and we talked about positivity. The, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the concept of this whole conversation is to inspire somebody who's maybe uh, very bright, very good at what they do, and just needs some talk from some real guys to steer them in a better way. Right. Um, and so we're not glorifying shit, right? Right. So when I was in New York, you know, you had just came home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a street dude. I was so strong that everybody who was coming home was reporting to me. Mm -hmm. They was coming home like, yo, Joe, because they knew me from the streets. I switched up and did the music. Never right. looked back. Never looked back. Like a Robin Hood story. Like That's a fact. Cinderella. That That's is a, a fact. fact. I don't got to lie to you. Boom, I moved on, never looked back. I said, all right, I'm going to do it in this rap shit like you did. I'm going to do right. it in this rap shit. And that's it. It got to go here. Mm -hmm. So like a pit bull, grab your leg and lock in. Mm -hmm. I'm locking this game. Like, yo, fuck that. Something got to give. I'm going to shake the street. I'm going on. And so, but one day, I got a concert in Madison Square Garden. Uh -huh. And I'm in the green room. And I just look at my friends. Right. My friends that I grew up with, my friends that are with me, my friends that have died for me and hold me down. And when I looked at everybody, one guy just came home for 20 years. One guy just came home for 18 years. One guy came home for 10. One guy this, this. And as I'm looking at all these guys, it hit me. I'm in Madison Square Garden. Mm. 
Um, I said, holy shit. I'm going to go to jail with these niggas. Mm. That, that's it. Like, I said to myself, if a motherfucker throw a, a, a ice at me, they're going to try to prove to Fat Joe that they're going to lay it or they'll lay out the garden. That's a fact. And I'm sitting there saying, oh, no, I got to take my talents to South Beach. Not because of anything, but because I knew, yo, Joe, you, you, this is too real. You walking around with some super duper gladiator, real dudes. You got to go and chill. You had to, you, you felt like you had to change it a little bit. You had to evolve. You got to evolve and to save my life because over here they don't really, really know. They know Fat Joe, the musician, the rapper. You know they don't family man. They don't really know me from the Bronx, so I ain't have all that. The people wave at me. I say hi and I keep it moving. I'm Fat Joe, the rapper. So it gave me a place where I could just do my music, focus right. on business, and mostly focus on family. But running around New York, you know, at that time, you know, I scared myself. I'm sure the same has happened to you. Of How course. do you stay away? How do you stay away from guys that love you, but you know it ain't as serious as you? There's like, look, I don't want to bring up shit. And, and it's too fresh and it's too just there's 18 people on an indictment in New York there's only one I'm hearing about on the news and all that yeah you know they do so, that by design though you know that but with every every with every rapper you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying uh, I got arrested maybe 10 different times for something my man's punched the guy in the face they said it's yeah, bad joke yeah, yeah yeah so it's, it's, it's so how do you avoid the guys that love you, but they dangerous. Right. How do for you me, how do you move around that? Yeah, for me, for me, for me, I had to like, cause some of the stuff that I wanted to do, some of the things that I wanted to be involved in, some of the business that I wanted to create for myself, I realized that everybody that I had around me wasn't on that same page. And that's the first thing you gotta understand is that all right, cool, everybody over here, they they aggressive, the shoes, the killers and all that, but the building that I'm trying to walk into. That's not, that's not needed. That's not necessary. So after a while, you start to see that you don't have everything in common with some of the niggas you started with. Because you're trying to, you're trying to do different business. You're trying, to, you're trying to navigate and trying to level yourself up to a different place. So I started to see that I had to kind of pivot because if we all, if we, look, if we all, just dirty niggas, then how's that helping? If we all just gonna be hood street niggas, hustlers forever, then how's that helping? Then nah, that's guys, not gonna work. You got the guys work. who you love, mm -hmm. who's telling you, yo, man, no, man, plug me in with your crack. <laughs> and you like, <laughs> you already know this guy's character. Right. He might try to rob Fat Joe in the store or something. You like, <laughs> yo, bro. Nah, yo, let me work. You know, I had guys, my brothers that I love. Right. Me, yo, take me to home, man. Put me in, in, in. I'm like, yo, bro, are you fucking crazy? Like, it ain't that I'm hating on you and I don't want to open right. the door for you. But what but you got? Some guys, <laughs> some guys I know will come in my house and I can have a million dollars cash and they won't take one dollar. Right. But I wouldn't trust them to walk with you around the corner. That's a fact. Because they might do some shit. That's a fact. Um, yeah. And and so we got to learn. You know, I remember uh, just jumping. To, I remember, like, guys like Snoop Dogg, right? right. So Snoop Dogg, he, he's allegedly or whatever, he's, he's, he's uh, a crit, mm -hmm. right? I think he's a crit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. I'm not snitching. Right. I think we all think he's a crit, right? Mm. Um, but Snoop Dogg's the biggest rapper in the world. That's right. And so so when Snoop Dogg goes to perform at the BET Awards or the MTV Awards, they let the animals in with Snoop. Mm -hmm. So now these guys are like, come here. They running down on every they, they, and and you know, so so Snoop is the passport.
and they could walk in there and shit they would normally not even be in. And I'm looking at this, I'm like, yo, we have to be careful. We do. Who do we, we do. have with us? And who do we introduce and take them and introduce them to people? Is that correct? It's about adapting. That's a that's a hundred percent correct. I can't everything is not for everybody. And every person is not for every room. You understand? So it's 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 that's how you minimize shit by knowing what you're working with and who you got around and knowing who's for what and who's not for that. You understand? Mm. I, I want I want you to introduce me to crack. For what? For what? <laughs> for what? <laughs> you know, niggas call home from jail with them with those dreams. Yo, when I come home, I want you, yo, for real, I wanna my nigga, you know what I mean? I want I wanna I wanna get up with yeah. They come they 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 calling home. With those, with those dreams of getting around such and such, getting around the industry and shit like that. But you gotta have it in you. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta have something about you, man. You gotta be about some business, different business. And absolutely, and I do believe that what what cats have learned in the streets, uh, hustling, selling drugs, mm -hmm. they've learned how to not get killed. They mm -hmm. learn how to. Hide from the cops. Meanwhile, they're marketing, they're promoting, they're running a Fortune 500 business. And so what I said is, if these guys could get around to changing their mindset and taking something legit and saying, I can make this shit happen and I can make this shit blow. It could be a tow truck company. It of could course. be ICs. Whatever the fuck you put your mind of to. Of course. Crack, like these, what you're saying is the gospel because this is part of the lies that they that they made us feel like when we was growing up. That only thing that we could do is 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 sell drugs, right? So it's like when a nigga, when when the average person think of think of a hustler, that's all they think about. My brother, you it's so many things that you could do with that same mind state. You ain't gotta be selling drugs. Is only one thing. That's one thing, and we did that to get off the ground. Now we here. Now what we doing? Yeah, everything, you know, I told, you know, we talking too real, so I don't like to say, but I told my brother, y'all can guess who. I was with him yesterday, and my brother, he, he, you know, he ain't come from where me and you come from, and he says, he says, Forest Projects, huh, Joe? <laughs> I said, yeah, Forest <laughs> Projects. And he said, and then he said, but, he said, but you such a nice guy, though, Joe. Like, you such a beautiful person. And I told him, yo, Mano, I don't know about you. They beat me up every day. 20 dudes beat me up every single day, two years in junior high. They jumped me 20 different guys. It was a joke. Who are we going to fuck up today? Hey, how about Fat Joey? Mm. Mm. I had to fight him and I fought him. Yeah. Every day yeah. I fought these motherfuckers. Yeah. Black eyes, yeah. lips, this. Yeah. I fought them yeah. every day. Every fucking day I fought them. Right. right? And I didn't know that I had to learn a lesson in a different way. God taught me a different lesson. It taught me not to be scared of nobody in the future. He knew I was going to have to deal with wolves and and animals. You know, and, and the thing about this is uh, you know, the thing about this is you got to accept your reality. Mm -hmm. That's something you've done and I've done well too. Um, you have to accept your reality. I live a pretty nice life. That's right. I'm not Jay-Z. I'm not Sean Puffy Combs. <laughs> accept your reality. Yeah. I got to accept my reality. And so what happens is, I knew a man, he was the greatest man in the world. Uh, he owned the Cadillac dealer. I say rest in peace, Tim Martin. He was like a mentor. Tim me. Martin, that was my guy. You know That's Tim two, Martin, right? Two, two Cadillacs, and, remember, yeah. And so Tim Martin would give anybody credit. Whatever. I remember that. When the recession happened, he had the number one Cadillac dealer in the country. I remember. Recession happened. They wouldn't give no loans to anybody that was coming to buy the cars. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't sell cars. He didn't know how to tell his family that he was fucked up in the pockets. 
I remember, and, bro. And the son still buying new Lamborghinis yep. to wipe the shop. And, and I love them. They family. Mm -hmm. But the point is, the man wound up killing himself I remember. because he couldn't accept his reality. Mm. And me, I tell you, they took all my money. I came back. You remember when Tarzan, the old Tarzan, when motherfuckers <laughs> was looking for Tarzan, he jumped in the water and got a straw and started breathing out the straw. <laughs> He you get away from every, they were going to yeah. kill Tarzan, right? Yeah, That's yeah. me. Look, when it go low, it go low. I tell, them, low. tell my wife, look, we're not doing that. This much. Let's chill. Right. Let's, let's chill. Yeah. This shit ain't what it is. Let's breathe through the straw mm -hmm. and chill. And so what happens is somebody who come up across money in the business, right? They come up in the, across the money, right? That shit start getting slow for them because shit ain't always high. You got high <laughs> hater, you, you wiping them niggas. Like you, you got high hater across the board, you running monopoly on That's them. a fact. Four shows a week or on the weekend. This, and then shit them, slow down. And you a record ain't, yeah. Right. So so it's like this go like this. And so Ups you gotta know where to breathe. And then some people say, nah, I got all this money, my family, everybody think it's this. Now I I'm a dabble in that. And I think because mm. I'm in the business, the rap business, I'm a mogul, I'm a rapper, something like that, they ain't gonna notice that I'm fucking with that. Mm. Mm. And it happened to Jimmy Henchman. It happened to Jimmy Henchman. He was getting money, he was doing the Vibe Awards, he was doing all that right, shit. Right, right. When his shit got a little low, allegedly, he's in jail for 10,000 years, allegedly, he started. Right. And... And and so you think they don't see that, but they always see it. And the reason why you're not in jail, God bless, is because you're not doing nothing. The reason no, Fat Joe's not in jail, he's not doing it. Fuck around and do something. Fuck around and do something. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, of course, definitely. It, it 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 makes sense. It's like life is a roller coaster, bro. Ups and downs. Whether you in the music business, whether you a actor, whatever, whatever, whatever industry that you in, it's gonna be times you gotta you gotta adapt to the environment. When it's good, it's good. When it's slow down, it's just like the pandemic. Everybody, you know, things started happening and everybody had to go on quarantine and money might have changed up for a lot of us. But you gotta adapt, accept the reality. Let me tell you something. This is a perfect example you said. Uh when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. right, I was telling my brother to relish this and Khaled, fuck it. When COVID hit it, I was scared, right? Mm -hmm. Because I was trained my whole life that artists make their money off the of shows. Mm -hmm. So my whole life, I was based off of, if I got a hit record, I got shows, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to go get money. So now it's COVID, you can't come out the house, Right? But I had other business deals I was doing. I learned more. So I got the stores. I got this. I got right. that. I got the Fat Joe shit. Whatever. Um, and so, thank God. I've been comfortable. I've, I've been making it through the storm. But I say to myself, how about, because it wasn't till the last four years of my career that I started shifting investing in businesses and investing and this to where I could eat even in the COVID. Because even right. my stores, they was closed for fucking four months. At the first, they, they right. was closed. Right? So I'm going, but at least I stretched myself out. I said, damn, there got to be some rappers that only depend on touring that is fucked up right now. It's going through. I'm being course. real. Yeah, yeah. Because that, if that's the only way that you depended on getting money, then you, you know the saying: you can't put all you can't put all your eggs in one basket. I I I never I never was able to depend only on that anyway. So I always knew how to deviate and and position myself to where I could I could maintain. You know what I mean? So even even now, like when the COVID hit, I was like, let me let me figure some shit out. I went and invested in. Started doing a podcast from the from the crib, kitchen talk. You know what I mean. So say the big show. So it's just different things. You gotta, you gotta. You know what? You know what? Man, it don't seem hard. Mm -hmm. it seem hard, but guys like me and you, we figure it out. We of not course. even supposed to be here. 
So exactly. we're gonna figure this shit out. We're so, gonna figure it out, bro. You know the big big show. Now we got TV yeah, huh? show. Now we this and this and that. We got it. You have to adjust. I always tell people, if you go to jail and guys can make grilled cheese sandwiches from fucking putting wires at a light. Pies bro, on the bed. you better figure this shit pies out. Pies on the bed, apple pies, dump like what? You can do anything. It's it's adapting, it's adjusting, it's figuring out what you got in front of you, what the environment is, and what you got to work with. Use which, what's, what's in your power. Use what you have. You can, any, you can do anything. Listen, I tell people all the time that the pain, the pain is almost always necessary, right? But it's always temporary. My cousin, may rest in peace, he made a, a permanent solution for a temporary problem. Whatever he was going through, he couldn't take it no more and took his own life. Now, what I'm saying is that we all going to go through some shit. I tell these young niggas that all the time. You know what I mean? The opportunity is greater than the problem. You know, once you start looking at it like that, then you you better able to navigate it. You know, it's the pain going to be here. The pain going to be here. Them days, it's going to rain. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen for everybody. You understand? You might be making 100000 a month. Now you're only making fifty. Like, whatever it is, it's going to happen. It's still better than sleeping on the floor of the projects with no fact. fucking AC wiping your ass with newspaper. Eating eggs and eggs and rice for dinner. You got me <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> hey, yo, man, you got me all you got me fucked, fucked up. up. They say, gonna figure it I out. Said, I'm talking. My wife called. I, I remember I had to do the little four months, nothing to brag about. But the first day I was there, I called my wife, and she's just so scared on the phone. Daddy, you okay? How is it in there? I said, well, to be honest with you, the cell was two times the size of my room in Forest Projects. It's kind of all right. <laughs> like, you know, I was in the fed, though, but I'm yeah. like, yo, this shit is clean. I'm, I'm all right. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm all right. My. And so, but what I'm saying to you is, um, this shit, everybody got to be very careful. And temptation, they say money to read the, the root of all evil. It's always temptation for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You wanted to fuck that man's girl because she was that man's girl. Mm. And that man came and shot you in your face in broad daylight somewhere. He ain't mm. even tough. He ain't even tough. He ain't even tough, did he? No! You pushed him. I'll you tell you something. I probably died for one time because, you know, the whole family's here. One time a girl told me, yo, what's up, neighbor? She was bad. All my neighbors is football players and baseball players. Right. This, right? She, what's up, neighbor? She caught me in the club. She was like, yo, what's up, neighbor? I'm like, hey, how you doing? Yo, but what's up? You told me crap. What's good? <laughs> so she tried to throw it at me. Right? <laughs> so I look at the girl. I said, listen, man, you my neighbor. Not only is disrespect to the highest level to my wife, but we live in Florida. That man might come over here and blow my fucking brains out by the mm. mailbox. Because mm. different when you slide and doing whatever, but when you know the dude, right, you right, tapping them high right. neighbor, you know, it's a yeah. different type of rage. Yeah, that's a fact. And so that temptation, even though the money sometimes is too good to be true. Right? I'll tell you a story that God tells me. Because I work for everything, Mano. Of course. I work for everything. This is a story. This is a joke for a moment. Somebody, super legendary gangster. Right? A, a super legendary gangster. Right? Mm -hmm. He said, he want to talk to me. Y'all want to talk to you. I'm like, why does nigga want to talk to me? All right, cool. I'll go talk to him. You know, <laughs> hopefully he don't try. He don't test the rocket launcher because this <laughs> thing going to go off. Like, <laughs> Like, don't get that fucked up. Like, don't oh, test okay, the rocket okay. launch job. Okay, okay. No, no, what's up? What, what you got to say? So the man tells me, just I'm just telling you, I'm Fat Joe, lean back. I'm making $100,000 a show flying in private planes. He calls me to talk to me. I can only think this guy wants to extort me, right? So mm. I go, boom. I go up in there. Boom, too deep. Me and Raul. And... I'm like, yo, what's up? And he said, yo, man, I know you got a, you got a beef with such and such, right? So I'm now really adjust. I'm, 
I'm in that guy's house. I really adjust the seat. Like, like I really like, oh, word? That guy? That's what you want to talk about? Right? So I'm sitting in this nigga. He got to be out of his fucking mind. Right? So I, go like I said, oh, that guy? You want to talk about him? He was like, yeah. Yo, check this out. The dude got signed by some dudes with a lot of money. And this is crazy what I'm telling you, especially right now in these times. Right? Um, his people who signed him, homie scared to move around. They want to give you a million dollars. They want to give you a million dollars to let this guy come outside. Fat Joe the rapper, right? Mm. So I look at him, I said, I said, whoa, let me tell you something right now. My beef with that guy's not even serious. Mm. Number two is I work for my money, bro. I don't extort people. I don't take advantage of people. And number three is tell them guys to tell them now to come outside and skip all around the town. Now, I'm going to tell you the two players, the two gems in my conversation. Even though the guy who was telling me, yo, I got a free million dollars temptation for you is so-called one of the legends that we look at like, with, right. you know. One is... For that money right there, and I was already making money, so that's how it comes. For that cap money, if I would have just reached for the million dollars, this guy turned out to be one of the greatest rats ever lived in life. Mm. Mm. He turned out to be the legendary rats of all rats. Mm. So most likely, I was going to go to jail for that million dollars that never existed. The second play to this was, the gem was... If a motherfucker could give me a million dollars to not fuck with a nigga, they could give my best friend a million dollars to pop my motherfucking head off. Mm. So I immediately say, no, I don't want no parts of this. Tell that guy to come around. Come around I'll and get that money. I don't want that money. And so the temptation of it is just there. And, and, and they try to lure you into that. And once you do that, you jammed up. Yeah, and then you, then you, um, you know, I mean, all all money ain't good money anyway, man. Since, you know, the gifts, you know that like, it's like, you accept something from somebody, then you you indebt it to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to accept everything from everybody, because then you, you may feel like that opened up the door for, for me to give you a favor later on. You may feel like that's that was your down payment. On a on a on a favor that you could call later on, I'm good. It's two things. Somebody do something like that that we talking about for you, for life. They think you they owe you, and the borderlines becomes mm -hmm. extortion because you think mm -hmm. this might get tell. Mm -hmm. And the next line is, they always got that get out of jail free card out the back of their pocket. Bro, let me tell you, man. I tell all my niggas, listen. Nowadays, it's 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 over. Right, we don't know what's happening. Right, it's over. Look at me. We don't know who, 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 who phones we might trip up on, and they already in a situation. It's you already been me? like that. I'm gonna tell you something, man. I'm gonna get off with you, man. I love you. I respect you. I love you too, my nigga. I realize that when I convert to becoming a pastor. <laughs> You're gonna be my opening pastor in the church. Yeah. We're gonna be the ghetto yeah. gospels. <laughs> and we're gonna touch some souls. Cause Let's I, do it. I, I don't talk to nobody else like this over here. Listen, they need more they need motivation, man. We can talk this type of shit. Yeah. 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 We need to be pastors and ready. <laughs> take the take the shit from Mace and yeah. run with it, man. But that's that street motivation though. You know that's that. That's that, you know, it, 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 it come from a different place, you know? But you know what it Are is, man, ain't nothing but love. Right now, or did you oh, yeah, we got a project? Yeah, Die Legend next week on Friday. Oh, next we Friday. We supporting that. You know I support Definitely. your shit all the time. All day, man. You always did. Nothing but love, my brother. You know I love, love you, man, life. and I respect I you, you even more. That's even more important. Peace, my brother. Peace. You don't know who I know. Rappers are in danger, and so is everybody else. You don't know who I know. Rappers are in danger. 
And so is everybody else. The next time I walk in a store, not mine, no, I walk in 145th Blue Jeans because I still support the businesses in the neighborhood. If Poppy, you see me, don't pull out your phone and start talking about 10 bricks. <laughs>